All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And I just want to do a quick video. I'm going to tell this, uh, you know, Christians or Christianity versus the Bible, man. Okay, because, you know, those of us in the know, you know, we, since we came to the realization after reading the scriptures diligently for ourselves, we now figured out, you know, that what the church is teaching us, for the most part, you know, 98%, 95% is, is totally incorrect. And for one, all you got to do is start off with uh, any church you go to, you know, across, uh, across the country, right, across the crunchy inside joke, um, or for around the world, for that stance, right, around the world, anywhere you go, you're going to find that they have a picture of, you know, sweet Jesus on the wall. And what, what color is the sweet Jesus? Of course, he's always going to be white. And not only that, to show him with blue eyes and long flowing hair. So the question is, well, where the hell is that at in the scriptures? Because last time I read the scriptures, it tells you in, um, you know, Revelation 114, it says his head and his hairs, they were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. They were red. And his feet were like unfined brass, as if it burned in the furnace. That sounds like a so-called Negro to me. That seems like a so-called black man. That seems like a black man. So why do I see a image of this white Jesus? And even, let's just say this, you know, because we got to go easy on him, right? We got to go to easy mode. You know, even if they wanted to jump around the part that says his feet were like burned brass, put that to the side for the, for the moment. Let's deal with why does the image of Jesus have long flowing hair? If the verse I just read says that he had hair that was white and wooly. It had a wool-like texture to it. But the key word I wanted to focus on is it said white. He had white hair. They had a woolish-like texture. So why is Jesus depicted as a Caucasian man with blue eyes and long flowing hair. That's clearly not in the scriptures. So even if they want to dance around the part that proves he was black, you know, how do they can then get past the part that says he, his hair was white? Because they depict him as having blonde hair. So, I mean, that in itself, you know, there ain't no way to get around that one. You know, that's, uh, you know, that's, if hey, look, that's a spiritual KO if I ever seen one myself. It's totally ridiculous. And then, you know, the next lie, you know, they'll tell you that Christ came to save everybody. Well, that can't be true because according to, um, you know, Matthew 15, 24, Christ said, I am only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ said he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ didn't come for everybody. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the scriptures. Christ only came to bring salvation unto the children of Israel. It came out of his own words, from his own mouth. Matthew 15, 24 says, I am only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And if you go to Matthew 10 and verse 5 on down, Christ told the apostles, you know, don't go, you know, into the other nations to teach but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Go to the Israelites where they dwell. And I'm nearly paraphrasing it. You can read it yourself. Okay, but that's a cut. That's the cut right there. Now say, so how the hell do you get around that one? Now, the next lie they teach is they teach that, um, you know, that we're living in a new covenant today. How the hell can we be living in a new covenant if it tells you Jeremiah 31 verse 31 on down, or it's reiterated in um, you know, Hebrews, the eighth chapter, right? Dealing with the new covenant. How the hell can we be in the new covenant if it tells you that in the new covenant, no man will teach his neighbor about the Lord, but all will know the Lord from the least unto the greatest. And they will all have the law written on their inward parts. That certainly hasn't happened. 
I mean, hell, if I asked a Christian to name all Ten Commandments in order, they can't do that. So what about the other 603 commandments? Because that's a whole nother lie. It's teaching that Christ only gave, or I should say God, right? God only gave uh, Ten Commandments for man to obey. That's clearly not true. All you got to do is read, uh, you know, Exodus, the 20th chapter, when, um, you know, the Most High gave Moses the commandments. He started off with 10, that's true, but then he gave more than that. He then went on to state other statues that they're supposed to go off of, like Leviticus 11. He said, these are the animals that ye shall not Right, that's the same language as it's used in the Ten Commandments. All right? So there's more than Ten Commandments to follow, and that's a whole nother can of beans right there. That's a whole nother topic. All right, so we can't, I'm not even going to go off onto that. That's a whole nother subject right there. You know, but it just shows you, man, okay, that, you know, the churches, you know, people are being led astray, man. Right, the people are being led astray. By what these, um, you know, these false teachers, you know, are teaching them in these churches, man. That's why you know, the scriptures say that, um, you know, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? Especially, you know, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, which are the Lord's chosen people. Now, they're, I mean, hell, man, you can't go to a church without there being some of them there. Why? Because our people are drawn. You know, to this white man's church. Hell, I know some churches, man. Like the one church I used to go to with Rock Upon Him. You know, and we left that. Right, when we left them, which was years ago. But when we left, it was pretty much, you know, 95%, you know, uh, uh, African Americans that were going. You know, and, uh, you know, very few you know, white people were going, right? Very few Edomites were, you know, still going to service there. You know, but it started off with the congregation being, you know, majority of white people. But then towards the end, because we were there for like two or three years, but then towards the end, you know, they all started to, uh, you know, to move away, you know, from the, uh, you know, from that, that church. Or at least stop going there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as he said, man, the churches are teaching lies. And you can and you can see it, right? You can see it. Brings up what what is that? I want to say Revelation two and verse two. It says that we have tried the men who said they are our teachers and are not, but we have found them to be liars. Right. So we tried the men who said they are apostles and are not. And we found them to be liars. You know with the uh you know these churches, you know, we took what they said and we listened to it. But guess what? We compared it with the scriptures and we found out that it's not true. All right, we compared it to the scriptures and we found out that what they were telling us was uh, BS, for lack of better words, man. Right, so as I said, people are just being drunk off of that Jesus juice, right? The scriptures are true, but the interpretation that people are believing that part is incorrect. Okay, so don't get it twisted. The scriptures are true, but the philosophy that the people believe in, that part is not true. Bear with me for just a second. And I mean, we could go on, right? There's many other subjects we could get. Okay, but I mean, that's, uh, you know, I think that's a, oh, what's, what's this guy? Just like, um, Mark Sargent would say, right, this is a beginner's digest version. <laughs> right, that's a, that, hey, look, that's a beginner's digest version, man. You know, just the beginning of it. Because it goes a lot deeper than that, man. What about, uh, oh, the whole hell thing. The whole hell thing. Well, wait a second, wait a second. What do you deal with the scriptures? You know, they'll tell you that, uh, you know, you die and you burn in hell if you're wicked. But if you're righteous, you go straight to heaven. It's like, well, how the hell is that true, though? Because according to, uh, you know, Job, the third chapter, it says that the righteous and the wicked, they rest together when they die. So that's cut there. But then we also know that hell in the Bible, 
actually refers to the physical earth that we dwell on. It doesn't refer to a spiritual location. Where the hell is that at in the scriptures? I've never seen that. You know, so we're, we, I won't go deep on that. You know, that's a whole other subject in, in and of itself. But, um, you know, they're clearly cut, man. That's all I'm going to say. You know, the church is clearly doesn't know what the hell is going on, man. You know, but anyway, you know, hope that video was edifying and I'm going to say shalom.